Okay. So I think I'm, while more people start to straggle in, I think I'm just gonna start to explain all the items that we're going to be using and everything like that. Uh, okay. So to start off, you have all your paint brushes. To make this easier for you guys, I'm really only gonna limit our use of paint brushes to three to make sure that you guys can follow along. But if you would like to use, you know, all the paint brushes, go for it. I'm only going to be using three. We have our four colors here with your plate palette. So that way you can mix some colors together if you want. The one thing that I do wanna ask is I know that was included in the bag, but if you wanna grab a paper towel to wipe your brushes on to make sure that they're clean and everything, that'd be great. And then a cup of water too is supposed to be used with the small cup that you received in your bag. That way we can clean our brushes and we can make sure that nothing dries out while we're working. So, to get started, I'm going to be following the basic painting that I made. However, this background, you can do anything that you would like. If you would like to just, you know, only do red, if you want to do, you know, a fall background or whatever, go for it. I'm just going to be following the basic things that everybody can follow along with. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is get your 5 8 uh, brush. That's your biggest brush that doesn't have the rounded. And then you're just going to start grab the red and just go for it. No rhyme or reason, just simply throw that red on the canvas. And don't be afraid to really pile the paint onto the canvas because that way you can blend it with the yellow that'll be on the edges. So as you see what I'm doing here, if you're following my example and not going off on your own pace, is I'm just essentially painting this big red rectangle, leaving white edges around the, ed uh, white edges, around the edges. So that way, as soon as I'm done putting in all the red paint, like so, I am going to clean my brush and then start using the yellow paint. So when I say clean your brush, I just mean go ahead, dip your brush into the cup, give it a little swirl, and then simply wipe it off onto your napkin. And that way you're pretty much get ready to use the other colors. So now I'm gonna go into my yellow. Now I'm gonna start putting it around the edges, not blending just yet, just putting it around the edges. And if at any point I am going too fast for you, please feel free to turn on your mic, tell me to slow down, ask if I could go back a step, whatever works for you, I'm more than happy to accommodate your painting experience. Hi, so yeah, we're a little behind on getting the red done, so. Can you so <laughs> yes. Thank you. If you're up to speed with me, absolutely no pressure. You just see I've put the yellow around and now I'm simply just gonna blend these two colors together by melding in the edges.
And don't worry if you are not caught up with me. We need allow we need to allow this to dry before we can start painting our griffin. So I will take a few minutes to just let everybody's canvas dry, let everybody catch up if they're doing something different. So no rush at all. So if you want to try a different technique, you can see that I've already blended the canvas together, but now I am just taking my brush. I'm kind of making like this giant circle with the edges here. Just pushing my brush around, giving it a little, uh, you know, dimension, if you will. Something that makes you focus on the griffin. Okay, so if you're following along with me, you should end up having something along the lines of this, you know, with your own interpretation and twist does not have to be an exact copy of what I've done. Then as soon as we finish up the edges, we're just going to go ahead and gently touch the middle of our canvas to see if the paint's dried. So for me, I have a little bit red that's still not dry, but we're nearly there. So I'm going to give it a few more minutes, maybe just keep playing with the blending of my background before I move on. Is anybody out there straying away from this and doing something different with their background? You don't have to show me, but I'm curious to know if anybody's doing something different. Yeah, I'm doing stripes. Stripes are cool. I like stripes. <laughs> I 
I'm just going to give everybody another minute or two to finish up the background and then I'm going to move on to the Griffin. If you feel rushed, uh, just let me know and I will try my best to slow down, but I need to accommodate for everybody's speed. So excited to see everybody's end product on these. I think it'll be really cool to see how different people do different Griffins. Okay, so for me, the middle of my canvas is dry, which means that I can go ahead and start working on the Griffin. Uh, if you need me to stop at any point, I will be taking like short little breaks in between my explanations. Just use that time to catch up. So we're going to start with the Griffin's head. I'm going to be using the brush number four. It's a smaller one with the rounded head. We're going to go ahead and dip that into our white. Start with an easy shape, kind of like a U, but it has more, you know, goes out more. So we're going to do our U. Oop. We're just going to give it a little pointy ends. Go ahead and make that head bigger if you messed up like I just did. But something along the lines of this. Just a big U. And from there, I'm going to start forming the griffin's head. So I'm just going to take my brush and put it out like that. It kind of has these weird, jagged, going out kind of lines. Nothing too complicated, just so you can see my canvas was not totally dry as the red is now blending with the white a little bit, but that's okay. What paint is for, you can just pile more on top of that. Are you using the big brush or the medium brush? This is the number four brush that has the rounded tip. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to pause at the head to let everybody else catch up before moving on to the body of the griffin. Is everybody doing okay? How are we doing on our heads? Go ahead. I'm kind of doing good. Kind of doing good. We got a little bit of a pink head. There was still a little bit of wet red, but we're, we're doing good, huh? That is totally okay because you know what? When we go back, you can just throw more white on there and the red is going to disappear.
Are we ready to move on to the body? Can I start with that or we need a few more seconds to finish up the head? Okay, I will give it a few more seconds and then we will, I will start painting the body. Okay, so using the same brush that I just cleaned off, we're going to start with the body and we're just going to be using yellow for that. Now, if you're like me, you don't like how vibrant this yellow is, go ahead and pour a little bit onto your plate and with a little bit of white and you can make a little bit more of a light yellow, something that's not as harsh. So I'm just taking my two piles and I'm just gonna, you know, push the two colors together and kind of mix it. This is always my favorite part of painting is just mixing colors together. So now you see that I have this nice little lightly tinted yellow. Now I'll go ahead and wipe the excess off my brush. And we're gonna try and do this griffin body in like five, five little steps. So to get started, we're gonna go on this outer edge of the head right here. Or we're just gonna put a little bit of a spike. Boop. We're gonna do it on the other side. And we're going to do the same thing that we kind of did for the head in the way that we're just going to put these lines down to give it these little bit of spikes. That's going to be the griffin's fur. So I'm going to go in on this side, down, up, just like that. From there on this inner spike right here, we're just going to throw a little line going down. This is going to be one leg of the griffin's body. We're gonna give it a little bit of a curved edge just to show his feet. We're gonna do the same exact thing on the other side of the griffin. Bring it down, straight line, and then just a curved edge going back up to the middle. Doesn't matter if it's a little bit wonky, I hate to say it, but there's no such thing as a griffin. So if you don't do a good job painting it, it's fine. There's nobody to correct you. The next step we're going to do is put the outer legs, the hind legs. So we're going to meet right in the middle of the center paw. We're going to go out and then we're just going to go right back up. So it's going to be coming out of that first spike that we did, just like that. We're just gonna go ahead, do the same thing on the other side. Just bring it down, curve. Oh, I didn't make it line up. Down, curve, there we go. So now you have something that looks like this shape. So once you've finished with this shape, we're just gonna go ahead and fill it in with the yellow that we have. Again, don't worry about what it looks like. We'll make it all come together in the end. Keep in mind where you have your designated spike. So I have mine right here, but I know this right here is the hind leg. So when I fill it in, it kind of looks like this weird, shape with four little whatever things. Um, but that's okay. okay. We're going to come back to it. We're going to fill it in. And we're going to make it look like a griffin's body.
So if you see, I'm just kind of filling it in as I go. I'm not worried too much about, you know, the feathers of the hair. Try and keep the shape just like I did right there where the white comes down. You know, I'll make a little V right there. So that way we kind of keep the feathers that we had when we drew out the white. And then we'll just go ahead, smooth it out, make it look a little nice. I'm just going in and I'm just filling in the griffin's body with my yellow, trying to make it look smooth and hide all the red underneath of it. I'm gonna give everyone just a few more minutes before I move on to the wings. We're gonna be doing the wings next to allow the body to dry before we can go back and start to add in the details and the outlining. So when you finish with the body and the head, you should end up with this weird looking yellow and white shape. I need to bring it closer so you guys can get a better look. Kind of looks like a Lego man almost, like one of the dwarf Lego mans. So now that I've finished with the body, I'm gonna go ahead and do the wings. And again, I'm keeping up with only using three brushes, but if you'd like to use another brush, you are more than welcome. I'm just gonna stick with the number four and go ahead and clean that off in my cup of water and then wipe it on my paper towel. As we start the wings, we're going to go ahead and use our white. We're going to go ahead and put a little bit on the brush. And to start our wings, we're going to go right from the middle of the head and just do this swoop. Whoop. Kind of off. Doesn't matter if it goes off the page. If this is another moment where you can do the wings however you would like. You, they can go off the page. They can surround the griffin. Feel free to use this however you feel that the griffin should be. This is about just your griffin pride. So once you see I have these two swoops. Oh, a little, there we go. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the underside of the griffin. So we're gonna go right about the mid body, right about here, where the back, middle of the back leg is. We're just gonna, you know, complete it. Again, don't be afraid to go off the canvas. I'm gonna keep it on the canvas just so you guys can see it. But it's just, again, another little rounded swoop. Bring it 
down to the hind leg, middle of the hind leg. And then just go ahead and fill that in. Just using your white. I think this time our canvas is fully dry, so it shouldn't turn our wings pink this time. Again, don't worry so much if, you know, the wings are uneven like they are with mine or, you know, they don't look like much of anything right now. We're going to pull this piece together in the end. And this is a great moment if you're like me where the canvas bled through a little bit. I'm just going to go back over and make sure this griffin's head is white. wings coming along. We're doing good with these. Great. I'm going to give everyone a few more minutes to catch up and let some canvases dry and then we're going to move on to the outlining of the body.
Okay, so now I just refilled my head in, so I know that paint is a little bit wet, but I'm just gonna do that test again where I put my finger to the canvas, feel around, see if any of my yellow body is still wet. So it's looking like my body is mainly dry. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the outlining of the griffin. We're gonna take our black ink, or paint, I don't know why I said ink. And this brush selection is going to be dependent on your skill level. So we're gonna be mainly focusing on the smaller brushes with the finer points at the end. So I know that I have a delicate hand, so I think I'm more capable of using the number one brush. But if you feel like you're not ready for it, feel free to use the number six brush, but keep in mind that you're gonna be just using the flat end of it. You're gonna be doing very delicate movements, just using the tip of it, not the whole brush. I would recommend using these smaller brushes just so we have some even lines and it makes our lives a little bit easier when it comes to the details. So now I'm gonna go ahead and dip my number one brush into the black paint. Just so I have enough to cover it up. We're gonna be dipping it a lot so don't overload your brush with paint. Then I'm gonna go ahead and start where it connected right here. So on the outside, I knew I put a spike right there. So I'm just gonna put that one black line right on the outside. And then that black line comes up and that's one of the feathers of the griffin. So we're just making kind of like a bunch of triangles right now. Then I'm gonna go ahead from this black line, I'm gonna bring it down again and bring it up. And that's another movement. So we're just gonna do this on both sides. Out, make our triangles. Don't be afraid to get a little bit creative with how the feathers of your griffin are. And this is where we're gonna start making the legs. So from the outer point of your first leg, so right about here for me, I'm going to draw a line or I'm gonna paint a line going down and just outlining this shape that we made. Bring it up to the middle right here. Don't be worried if it's shaky, if it's not a straight line. Again, griffins are fictional animals, so there's no such thing as a wrong portrayal of them. And we're just gonna go ahead and follow our outline throughout the entire body. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the other leg. I'm gonna bring it up where this point meets and just bring this black line down here. This black line is gonna serve as the way we can tell the front legs from the back legs. Now I'm just gonna take some liberties and this is where you can have fun with it. Just make triangles as you see fit to indicate where the griffin's feathers are. So I know that he's gonna have three big tufts right here in the middle of his body. And you should end up with whatever you do, something along the lines of this. And this is where we're gonna go in. Now we're gonna do the hind legs. Same thing from where the point was or wherever it meets, just outline this back leg right here.
So this is the fun part where you can do whatever you would like. I'm just gonna follow along with my painting, but we're gonna do the pause right now. So this is really easy. You're essentially just gonna be doing little U shapes going along the bottom of the legs. So one, two, three. And that serves as the Griffin's paw. And we're just gonna mimic that movement for each of the legs that we have. So one, two, three. Same thing for the back legs. This one you might be only be able to see two humps. So one, two. And this one looks like I'm only gonna be able to see two as well, so. But just fill up the space as you feel fit. If you would like a bit of a challenge, you could go ahead and add some nails in. And by challenge, this isn't really a challenge. Just go ahead and do a little swoop motion, whoop, to show a spike on the bottom of his paw. Comes outside the outline a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that, but we're just adding some nails to make them look more fierce. We griffins are fierce. So now that we have our griffin body with our griffin claws and the nails, I'm going to give everyone just a few more minutes and then I'm going to move on to the rest of the body now that the rest of the paint has dried. So if you're still working on the body, no worries. I'm just going to move on to the head and it's essentially going to be the exact same process as the body. We're just going to be outlining what we painted with the white. So I'll start at this side. And I'll bring the paint all the way up, just outlining this white that I made.
So you see, I just did the outside of the head, just outlined it with black, no problem. Now I'm going to go in and do the feathers. So again, just making triangles, kind of following what we made already. Now you see, we just have these spikes going along to show this is where the head ends, this is where the body starts. And I'll pause for a second to let everybody catch up. Okay, so just going forward, same thing. I'm just going to be starting to outline the wings, starting with the outside, and then I'll do the details on the inside. So this is where you can start to have a little bit fun with whatever wings that you decided to make. So for me, I kind of went off the canvas, but I'm still gonna take my black paint. I'm gonna come in on the sides to show that, you know, the wings break up a little bit. We're just gonna make these lines coming in. Just to show, you know, they are feathers. Same thing on the other side, just bring in a few lines. Now, 
these parts of the wings are really just up for your interpretation of how you feel feathers might look. So the easy way of doing it is just making, again, some more triangles, kind of like a mountain range, just right on the wings. Just following that kind of pattern, like a big M that's stretched out. Along the lines of that. And then you can go in, you can add some more triangles here and there to show that, you know, there's more feathers, there's more definition. I like to think of doing art as however you interpret it, however you want it to be. If you want to go out and do full blown feathers, go for it. If you're just sticking with the M's like I am, even better. I'm gonna go ahead, do the same thing with the M's on the other side. And you should end up with your wings looking something along the lines of this. I'm going to give everyone just a few minutes to catch up before we move on to the head and then our final touches of the lettering. Okay, so if you finished up the outline of the rest of the body, you're gonna go ahead and go back to the number four brush that you were using earlier. For me, there's still yellow on this brush and that's okay because we're just about to do the beak of the griffin. So for the beak of the griffin, we're gonna go ahead and make this kind of oval shape right in the center of the face. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the brighter yellow just so you guys can see it. But we have this oval right in the center of the face. Now the only difference is that you're going to take your oval and on the top end you're going to follow your brush and then let it go off to the side just like that. So it should look something along the lines of this. I know you guys can't really see it because it's yellow, but something like this at least. You'll be able to see it more when I go back over it with the black to outline. And while we're waiting for that yellow to dry, we're gonna go ahead and do our eyes.
So for the eyes, we're going to take the small detail brush that we were using earlier for the outline. And you're just going to make these two lines that kind of arch downwards, something along the lines of that kind of motion. We like to think that our griffin is fierce and has angry eyes, but if you want your griffin to be kind, go ahead and arch these lines a bit less at an angle, more at a, you know, you can paint on the side here, something like that at least. Then we're going to go in and fill in the pupils. So going off our angry eyebrows, we're going to go ahead and make another two ovals underneath. Oval one, and then our oval two, just under this, oh no, <laughs> it's fine. Because look, acrylic paint is great. You can just wipe it a little bit and then take your other brush and just pretend that your mistake never happened. It's one of my favorite pieces of art where you can pretend things never happened. It happens when you have a shaky hand like I do sometimes. Anyway. We're gonna go ahead and put the pupils of the eyes in. You know, make sure it doesn't fill in all the oval that you made, just the middle of it. So you have an angry griffin, kind of looking like that. So for the sake of time, I'm just going to keep on going, but it's pretty straightforward from here. So if you fall behind, do not worry about it. I'm just going to go ahead and outline the beak at this point. So you're just, again, going to follow along the yellow that you did. If you're like me, shaky little paw, don't worry about it. And this is the part that most people get chucked up on. On the bottom end, you're gonna take your black and you're gonna swoop it down and you're gonna stop your outline there. Because we're gonna take our black going forward and we're gonna make a little swoop motion. So we're gonna make our griffin smile like he's smirking. He knows he's great. He knows he's, that he's tough and everything. And we're gonna make him smile and finish off his beak. Just like that.
So I'm gonna let everyone take a second to catch up. And then if you finished the head, the beak, the eyes, the last thing is our hill, yeah. So if you finished everything from there, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our big brush again, the one that we used to make the background. And we're gonna dip it in our white. And we're gonna write our hell yeah. So we got our H. Feel free to write this hill yeah has, however you see fit. I'm just continuing to follow my example that I made earlier. So we got our hill and now we get to make our yeah. After you guys finish up your hill yet, you now have your completed seat and hill drink and doodle painting. All right, that is all that I have for you guys tonight. Please stay tuned uh, to see if we have future drink and doodle events. I hope to see you again. Thank you so much, guys. Have a wonderful night and happy Crimson and Gold days.